So this story is for all those people who were shy in elementary school as a little kid. That was me. I always wished I could be the class clown like Johnny Berg and entertain the kids and make them laugh. I couldn't do that. I would have been way too embarrassed. Think back to the feeling though that you had when you, it was Halloween and you could wear a mask. Nobody knew who you were and you could do whatever you wanted, be as silly as you wanted, and it was okay. The first time I saw a clown was at a family reunion. It was Fluffo the Clown. He showed me how he put his makeup on. He showed me how he put his nose on, showed me his big shoes. I thought, when I grow up, I am gonna be a clown. It would be just like a Halloween mask. You put that makeup on, you put the nose on, nobody know who you are. You could be as funny as you wanted to be. And when I turned 40, I became a clown, Yodi the Clown. I got a big mask from Ziggy's Magic Shop downtown Lancaster. I mean, I got, sorry, I got a nose, a red nose, got the makeup from Ziggy's, put it on, created my own special little mask got the clown shoes and I started performing at birthday parties, at family reunions, at company picnics, things like that. 2004, I was invited to perform at Greystone Stables. They have a therapeutic writing program. It was their annual potluck to honor the guests, the volunteers who came, to honor the donors, to give awards to the writers. And there I was, a clown. It was going great. I had a great time, except there was one little boy. I'm going to call him David, seven or eight years old. He was terrified of me. Every time he saw me, he would scream. I could perform for his mom. I could perform for his younger brother. I couldn't perform for him. I tried to stay out of his line of vision. And that was a little hard. He, had, he was in a wheelchair, had limited mobility, but he would crane his neck around. And every time he saw me, he would start screaming. I could not win that little boy over for anything. After the hour and a half I was leaving, I thought, I cannot walk away. I just had that picture of his tear-stained face in, in my mind. I cannot walk away. So I took off my nose, used my big red hanky, and I wiped the makeup off my face as best I could, got rid of my clown shoes, walked back into the room barefoot. I had just a little cube, a little phone cube, little magic trick I carried back in with me, found his mom. I said, can I try one more time? She said, sure, go ahead. So I went over in front of his chair and I said, hey bud, would you like to do some magic with me? And he said, me? And he had a deep low voice for that little guy. Me? Can I help? And that was problem number one because David had food smeared everywhere. Across his face, on his clothes, his hands were covered with food. The tray on his wheelchair was covered with food. And I said, uh, maybe we could have your brother. And then I stopped. I thought, I bet David has heard that hundreds of times. And it was a phone cue. I said, sure, David, this thing will wash. I bet you can do it. And then his mom started digging in the bag that was hanging off the back of the wheelchair. And David, in his little deep boy voice, said, uh-huh, she's getting the wipes. And it took a lot of wipes. But mom got him cleaned up. And then we got to problem number two. I said, David, could you put your hands and make a little birdie nest with your fingers? And he said, I can't open my fingers. His hands were in a permanent clench, something like that. And that's what we did use his brother's hands. David put his hands close together. His brother put his hands around David's hands. And I put my hands on the top of the bottom after I pushed that little foam cube down into their hands. We counted to 10 real slow. We opened up the hands and the foam cube had transformed into a little red dragon. David's laugh was magic. It just bubbled out. It just welled over. We were all laughing. I mean, you couldn't help but laughing with David. And then I said, before I left, I said, David, do you know who I am, buddy? And he said in his little deep boy voice, of course I do. You're the clown. I said, really? Yeah, I know you. I said, but David, you were scared of me. He said, 
I wasn't scared of you. I was scared of your nose. I was scared of your makeup. You're the clown. I still have that clown nose, but I haven't worn it since 2004. It's sitting on a shelf right over there. Every so often I take it down, look at it, just to remind myself that I am the clown. It's not the nose. It's not that mask I created. It's me, and that's good enough. Thank you.